Here comes Peter Cottontail. All right, so is that how bunnies hop? I don't know. I, I just thought that's what I remember doing <laughs> for a bunny hop. I don't know. If you know differently, let me know. But hi y'all. Today's video is going to be a fun one. It's an Easter project, two projects, super cute. One turns out, well, they both turn out adorable, and I think you're going to love them. So stay tuned. And let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. I think I'm still a little bit out of breath from doing like the little bunny hop intro thing. Maybe I, maybe I need to work out more. I don't know. But I wanted to tell you guys that today's video is also part of a playlist challenge. It's called the Easter Spring Look Off the Hook. And the hosts are Crafting in a Mimi's World, DIY Craftaholic, CJ DIY, and the guest host is Pretty DIYs. Now my video, I'm putting it up a little bit late because I am who I am, <laughs> but I'm gonna have the playlist linked below. I really hope you check out all of the other videos. I think you'll find some really great inspiration, as well as the link to the host channels and the guest host is gonna be in the description box below. Click on them, subscribe, support them, encourage them, and yeah, and have fun. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the video. We're going to kick things off with what is essentially an Etsy dupe. And I found this inspo piece on Etsy and it's $7 for the template. So you're not actually getting a sign, but you're getting the template. Anyway, we're going to try to recreate it today. I could not find, I only had one tag sign. I had that, that dark brown is a tag sign. I only had one and I needed two. So I found these four boards at Dollar Tree and I'm just taking off all of the little do twine hangers and tags on it. And then I'm gonna combine them together to be able to cut them down all at one time instead of trying to do separate cuts and hoping that they match up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just using some painter's tape and then I'm taking the sign. See, it was a welcome pumpkin patch sign. And I am using that as a template for myself. So the tag sign has a hole and I was wondering how to make it. And Marvin just says, use your jigsaw and kind of cut it out. So I just notched it out until it had the like, opening there. I thought it was a pretty clever idea. Thanks, Marvin. So I put the two sides together and now I'm going to use some scrap pieces of painter sticks that I had on hand. Cause you know, I save almost everything. <laughs> I'm using some wood glue to attach those together. And then I'm going to be using the little pieces there to kind of brace them together to make one sign. I noticed that the top of the sign kind of split there. So I'm just using some joint compound to kind of fill that in a little bit. And I'm using Rust-Oleum's chalked ultra matte paint in the color linen to give it a base coat. And I'm just going to paint the front of the sign because you're not really going to see the back. <laughs> and then I'm using this beautiful color. It's a folk art matte paint and it's called Adrift. I just think it is such a beautiful color. And I'm painting one of the signs. I've kind of traced out where the bunny goes, but I'm, I'm just painting one of the signs with that color. I just think it's an absolutely gorgeous color. Now you can either let it dry or make it dry. <laughs> and I'm just using my heat tool to kind of speed up the drying process. And now that things are dry, I'm taking some painter's tape because I'm going to be making buffalo check. Essentially I'm making buffalo check, but I'm kind of doing it a little bit differently. And I do reuse my painter's tape as much as I can, just because I think that that's what I like to do. <laughs> reuse it as much as possible. I'm using folk art paint in the color linen, which is a noticeably different linen color than the Rust-Oleum that you see next to it. But it's a beautiful beige, just very neutral color and I love it too. And while that's drying, I take some, um, it's another color, I don't remember the color right now, but anyway, I'm just making little circle dots. I did put a little bit of white in the middle just to kind of make some fun little pops of color. Now I'm gonna be painting, like I said, I'm trying to make buffalo check, but look, the paint came up. It wasn't all the way dry. So I sanded it down to make it smooth and I'm using that linen color just to kind of fill it in and I'm going to let it completely dry. I'm not going to try to use my um, heat tool or anything like that. I'm just going to let it naturally dry. Now that I've let it fully dry, just air dry, I'm putting painter's tape in the opposite direction and I'm using a little piece of painter's tape as a spacer. 
And once that's done, I'm going to take some more. Um, oh, no, that's I think that's territorial beige. And I'm, it's a little bit darker color than the linen. And I'm just filling it in so it just has a little bit different tone to it. Now, as I normally do, I did not let this step dry all the way. And I'm just pulling the tape off. And so far, it seems to be doing pretty well. But there is some areas where it just looks a little sloppy, I think. And I'm taking that linen color again from Folk Art. And I'm completing the lines because it's missing the other lines. As, like I said, I didn't do a complete buffalo check. <laughs> just kind of, I don't know, winged it, I guess. And as you can see, the... The painting, see, it's just a little, like, messy, sloppy looking. So I just take my finger sander and just kind of smooth everything over. And we're just going to go for the little bit rustic look on this one. And then I take some more of that Adrift color. And I am starting to draw or paint some lines down. No real rhyme or reason where I'm putting them. Just kind of a mimicking that inspo piece from Etsy. Then I take the color Maze and... Again, just adding some lines there. And I take ballet slipper and I add some more lines. Just kind of giving it some different color and dimension. And then I take, this is a purple cover. Hy I can't even think of the name now. Hyacinth? Hyacinth? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm taking this purple color, lavender color. And again, just adding some more lines up and down and then also across. Vertical and horizontal. So th those are the two words that that means. <laughs> and while that's drying, I'm taking some more. Now this is actually folk art paint in the color white. And I'm coloring in the bunny. I say coloring in, but it's actually painting in. I'm not using crayons or anything. So I used Parisian Gray from Waverly. And I'm kind of using a sponge dauber to fill in the tail area. And then I'm also going to use it to fill in um, this area on his face, like his little snout, I guess. I really, I'm not familiar with bunny parts, I guess. And we'll put some pink on his belly, her belly. I didn't really genderize this rabbit, so I'm just putting some pink on the belly and some pink on the nose. And then I'll also put some pink on the ear. But the ears kind of flopped over, so you're not doing pink all the way up. And while stuff is still drying, I'm taking a black paint pen and I'm outlining the bunny, the bunny's ears, and his little snout and his little nose, drawing in his eye, and just going all the way around the bunny like that. Now in this part here, you could use um, your Cricut if you want to, but I'm just hand lettering it on, and I'm writing, hey peeps. And maybe I don't have the, the best handwriting, but you know I think it's turning out okay. I had a little washer left over, and I am just roughing it up a little bit with my finger sander and putting some painter's tape down or masking tape down so I can paint it with that adrift color. And I am trying to use my heat tool to kind of dry it in between, but I end up going with a sponge dauber to kind of give it uh, a better coating of paint. And it's time to attach the two signs together, so I'm using some E6000 and I've cautioned you on this before, but if you're buying E6000, make sure you're either buying the clear if that's the one you want, or it comes in black. So just be careful. And I'm using some hot glue for a quicker hold, and then the E6000 is for a more permanent, longer lasting hold. And this is how it turned out, y'all. I think it just looks so super cute. And I mean, I think my writing looks fine. And again, I'm not sure where I'm going to hang this up in my house, but... I love all of the colors, even though that buffalo check didn't come out quite as neat as I would have hoped. You can't really tell from a distance, and I still think it looks adorable. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I wanted to pop in and tell you that I have a crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. It's linked below as well, so I hope you check it out. If you join, please make sure that you leave a comment, encourage somebody, post something that you're working on. We'd love to support and encourage you as well. All right, the second inspo piece is also from Etsy, um, and this listing is $55, so it's for the actual sign. I'm going to be recreating it, but putting my own little spin on it, and it's not an exact recreation. Also, if you can hear anything in the background, Marvin's heating up dinner. Yum, yum. 
I was going to make a, I call these back of the truck signs. I was going to make a back of the truck sign for Valentine's Day. I originally painted it with, I think it was true red or maybe Christmas red. And then I was using, I was like, no, no, I, I need to do it like a different color so that the hearts pop, you know, stand out. And then I painted it with that really, really pretty aqua color, but it was just like too intense. And so then I'm just going to use my tried and true Rustoleum's Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color Linen to give it a fresh coat of paint so we can kind of start from scratch. Once again, I'm using that beautiful Adrift color from Plaid Paints and I just think it looks so pretty y'all. Anyway, I'm kind of outlining the actual truck with that color and I'll go all the way around. The tailgate, I made a little separate piece. Oh, by the way, I cut this out with my um, jigsaw and some scrap plywood that I had on hand. Anyway, I had a, another piece of scrap that I'm gonna use for the um, tailgate and I'm just painting that with the mint color and then the adrift color as well, kind of blending those together. Now the bumper, is the is the bottom thing on the truck called the bumper, honey, or the fender? Is the fender at the front or the back? What's the back? Oh, okay, the bumper. Man, <laughs> so uh, Marvin is also um, good at cars. Anyways, I'm, I'm painting that bumper there with this um, elephant gray. It's a, it's a really pretty gray color too. And I'm painting the tires just with black paint. That's simple, easy to do. Now the stuff that's gonna go in the truck, I'm painting three carrots. So I'm using actually a pumpkin color because I really like that color from, <laughs> um, it's another Waverly um, chalk paint color. And I'm just painting the carrot part with this pumpkin color. And while that's drying, I'm using some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I cut these three shapes out of cardboard and this is going to be the bunny. Back to the car, I'm using a sponge dauber that I got from Dollar Tree and just kind of swirling it around to make the tail lights. And then I'm using a chippy brush and some Parisian gray paint and just kind of lightly, just very, very lightly adding on the, I guess the reflection of the window. Then I'm using three different colors of green and a chippy brush and I'm just kind of you know, stroking it on just like that, like you see me doing there. And I'm not too particular about the green and how it's blending or not blending because you're not really gonna see it as much. And I also use a silver paint pen as well to give it some dimension. Using a white paint pen, I'm outlining the tires and then I'm gonna add the little tread marks. And I'm just drawing little straight lines and little arrows. And then the next one I do arrows in the other direction and then on the third one, I do the arrows in the same direction as the first one. And I do the same thing for the other side. While I have the white paint pen out, I'm just adding some highlight to the tail lights. And I do that for both sides. I use that same white paint pen to add some little highlights around the truck. Back to the black paint pen. I'm just using it to outline like the tail lights. And then I'm gonna outline the entire truck and just add some dimension like to the bumper and things like that. I feel like when you do the things like outlining and um, adding highlights and things, it just gives it a more finished look to it. And I'm using, I think it's burnt sienna maybe, or maybe it's cinnamon. And I'm just, just get a brownish color and kind of add a little bit of dimension to the carrots because they're going to have those lines around them. And so that's what I'm just trying to mimic. And I'm using some vivid pink to add in the bunny's paws or bunny feet. I don't know. Are bunny's feet called paws? I don't know. Again, I don't know bunny parts. <laughs> so uh, correct me in the comments if you would like. I'm taking some greenery that I had on hand and I'm starting to glue it where the greenery is on the carrot. And that's why I said it didn't really matter too, too much how you painted that green stuff, uh, the green end of the carrot, because it's going to be covered up with this greenery that I'm adding to it. And I'm just filling it in and making sure that it's looking how I want to. And I'm not real worried about the little end of the stem because I'm about to cover that up. I take some jute twine and a little bit of hot glue to get it started. 
and I just wrap it around like, I think like four times, just enough to cover the bottoms of that greenery that I just added. And I know carrots in real life don't have that, but mine do. So <laughs> there you go. You do you. I've set everything down so I can kind of see where I like it. And I had this jumbo pom-pom bunny butt thing. And I think I got them from Hobby Lobby. Anyway, I used that for the bunny butt. And then I glued on the little feet where I wanted it. And I've kind of marked with my pencil where things are going to go. So when I lay that back down, I know where to place it. And I'm using E6000 for a more permanent hold and a little bit of hot glue to give me an immediate hold. And yeah, just setting them down as I had them laid out before. And I did add some more um, black paint detail, but y'all, look how cute this looks. I just think, I just think it looks so cute. It looks high end to me. And I mean, I don't know how much you'd spend on it, but I just think it looks adorable. And I don't know where I'm gonna hit. I think I'm gonna put it on my front door, but I'm not sure yet, uh, but I just love it. It's not really weatherproof. That's why I kind of hesitate to put it on the front door. But the other sign that I did at Halloween worked out okay. So maybe this one will too. Hey peeps. <laughs> How'd you like the video? I love this one because, well, the, the buffalo chick didn't turn out, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I just think it's super cute and I like it a lot. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to hang this, but, um, I love all the colors. I think it turned out cute, but also, and this is no surprise, but my favorite is that I just think this turned out so cute. I love a little plushy bunny butt there, and I just love how it all came together, and hope you do too. And you can tell me which one was your favorite in the comments below, or if you didn't like either, you can tell me that too. You can give me a thumbs up. You can do all the things. I would really love it if you would subscribe. I'm really trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and I know I'm a little ways off, but you know, every single, well, every single person that subscribes helps me reach that number. So if you like, hey, you're like, hey, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I'm rambling on. It doesn't really matter. In the big picture, I'm glad you're here. And if you want to follow me on other social media, well, if you want to follow me like here on YouTube or other social media like TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or something like that, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye! <laughs>